Okay. okay, so so now now we're going to move on and talk about uh, quasi-static time-varying magnetic fields. So what that means and um, and how to solve them. So how to formulate problems um, using quasi-static uh, equations. So if we if we go back now and look at Ampere's law where we add the displacement current in. So from Am Ampere's law with displacement current we have del cross H equals J plus the uh, the change in electric flux, uh, electric flux density with time. Uh, sorry, the electric field intensity with time. So then, um, and then we also have Faraday's law, Faraday's law, uh, which is. Del cross E, del, del cross E is equal to minus dB dt. And I'll call that 23. And so um, now that, uh, if we look at uh, Ampere's law, um, the, uh, the permittivity here. But the permittivity is equal to epsilon naught epsilon r. So epsilon naught is equal to 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12. And then we have some relative permittivity. So, so, if, um, so if, if, if the change in the electric field intensity with time is not very great the the, the 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 partial derivative then then this this whole term here is going to be really small and so um, we can actually neglect it without any trouble and so that's what we do in um, in power basically in the power area we neglect this uh, whole term here because it's so small it is negligible um, so I can write, um, so since, so since the permittivity is very small, assuming uh, the relative permittivity is, um, is a small term, which it usually is, uh, uh, so since permittivity is very small, if the change in E with respect to time is not large, then this term can be neglect um, can be neglected. So this, this whole term we can say is zero. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm talking about um, if you had um, a frequency, you know, of, of of uh, 60 hertz for sure, you know, 5,000 hertz, these sorts of values where this is changing, this is going to be really small because you've got a small change, uh, it's a relatively small change, um, and then you're multiplying that by a really small number. So this, this, this has a small contribution. If we're talking about changing the change, uh, E changing with, with megahertz, then, then this is going to start to have an impact. So um, but in, in, in power area, we're not, um, uh, we're not usually having fields changing 
um, above 20,000 20, hertz uh, for, for magnetic problems. Uh, for switching you can have much higher frequencies now but um, for, uh, for uh, magnetic uh, problems we can neglect that. So then, so then the um, Ampere's law and Faraday's law um, they simplify down. So, so if if um, fields change slowly, not megahertz, uh, then we can say that we have dal cross H is equal to J and dal cross E is equal to change in B with respect to time. And so this and so those two equations uh, form a quasi-static um, model. So it's not it's not completely static because we have dB dt, but we're neglecting dE dt. So this this is the this is the most used um, equations for power problems, quasi-static. Maxwell Maxwell equations. So then we can um, now we can keep going um, down this rabbit hole to solve. Now now will be, be a, now H is a H is a uh, vector. We've got B as a vector and we've got E as a vector. So this is kind of not good if we wanted to. How are we going to solve all of that the way it is? And J is a vector, that will be a source. So, so we, want to, we want to reformulate um, this uh, quasi-static into, uh, a way, into a different solution that allows us to solve just one um, term. Uh, and to do that, we're going to convert it into um, magnetic vector potential. And that will allow this to simplify down. So the, the, the first thing is... Um, we should re-express H. We can re-express H in terms of B. So um, remember that B is related to H by um, mu naught H plus M, where M is a magnetization. So that that was um, that's equation 15 from previously in the notes. So if we substitute 15 back into 10. We did, did that bit before. Uh, then we get del cross B over mu naught minus M is equal to J. And, and then we have the del cross B again. So now, now we've got the source terms J and M. We've got the magnetic flux density B and we've still got the, the E here. Okay, uh, so now, now, but now let's substitute in for um, the B, replace B with A. So that, this is equation 16 and, uh, and this is 23. 16 is from before, so I've reused the same equation. So, so let's substitute in, so substitute B equals del cross A into 16 and 23 and then we get Um, and we get del cross del cross A over mu naught minus M is equal to J 
which we had with the magnetostatic, and but we've got this additional term, del cross E is equal to minus uh, del with respect to T del cross A. Uh, so that's um, it's not really looking simpler. Now we can, but let's rearrange 25. So we can write that um, we, we can. This is a del. This is a del cross A, and this is a, a del cross E. Let's um, let's move this this change. This this is the, this 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 del is not. Um, that, that's a a gradient. So we can put the change in with respect to A inside, and so then we can have. Um, del cross E plus del A del T is equal to zero. So rearrange 25 and I'll call that 26. Now um, now if we now if we go again to um, of vector identities, we can note that since this is, and this is kind of cool, since del cross del v is equal to zero, so the gradient, the gradient of v and then you curl it, this is also equal to zero, that's a vector identity. So if we compare this to 26, we can see that, that, the, that, the, that the term in the brackets here must be equal to the gradient of a scalar, which I've called V. So, so with, so then we can write um, that. So, since this is true, we can write that E plus del A del T is equal to. Um, minus del phi. I can put a minus there because it um, see I can put a minus on this side and at minus zero is still zero. See? <clears throat> so I'm allowed to do that. Or I could rearrange um, this to be E is equal to minus del V minus D A D T which is uh, 27. So, so when we have um, things changing in time, E is no longer just in terms of del V, the, the, um, uh, the electric scalar potential. Uh, it also has an additional term, um, which is d d del A del T. And this, this term um, is the cause for eddy currents. So for static, for magnetostatic problems or electrostatic problems, del A, del T would be zero. Uh, now we can note that that the 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 current density J is rela related to E by sigma E plus some source. So where, where, where this sigma is conductivity. Material conductivity and this would be some source current. So, so then J is related to E um, it, with this relationship, um, and so then, and we know what E is here, so we can substitute 27 into 28. Okay. 
if you don't uh, if you don't remember any of these terms just look them up in a magnetics book so 27 into 28 gives uh, J equals um, minus sigma del V plus del A del T plus J S so that's 29 so now now we have an equation for J which has A in it so if we if we go back to I think I erased today no uh, now if we go back to 24 here see we have the J here the J so we've, we, we had the second equation here that we rearranged and we, we managed to write the second equation Faraday's law we managed to rewrite that in terms of a J vector a, J, a, a, a current density vector so we can now substitute that in to uh, we can now substitute, substitute the value of J um, into 24 that we derive from Faraday's law by rearranging it uh, so because we, we've got this out here so we substitute that back in um, and we get so 29 into 24 we then get del cross del cross A is equal to del cross M minus sigma del A del T minus sigma del V plus J yes, so that's 30 so lastly um, we have this del cross del cross A that, that doesn't look nice uh, we, can, we can use a vector identity to replace that so uh, like we did before so using uh, identity um, del cross del cross A is equal to del um, del del dot A minus del squared A and if we use the Coulomb, jet, uh, Coulomb gauge then uh, del dot A is equal to zero so using identity with del dot a equals zero we finally get del squared a divided by mu naught is equal to sigma del a del t plus sigma del v minus del cross M minus J S so so this so this this term here that's that's the induced current that's induced current that there's a sigma for the conductivity of the material so that will give you um, eddy currents for example and then this term here, the, the del V, that would come about with um, charge buildup, um, especially if you have discontinuities. But um, often this can be neglected. Charge buildup due to discontinuities. Uh, and then, then this is due to the, some um, magnetic material and then this would be due to a source current so we have, we have all those terms but now the important thing is we only, we only have the one unknown it is a vector A 
uh, and then uh, so we have a unknown but we also don't know what the scalar is so this this um, this formulation is often called the the AV formulation it's a it's a famous formulation that allows you to solve um, quasi-static problems so you have to solve uh, in the general case you have to solve uh, three vectors a plus the uh, scalar V because you would you would define what your magnet material is, your magnetic material, and you'd define where your sources are, and you'd define you know what your conductivity is. Okay, but uh, but that's still kind of complicated. Um, so 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 in general, you know, a in the most general sense, right, a is a is a vector with three. Um, spatial variables so you know note just to make it clear a as a function of x y and z and so you'd have an ax component that would be a function of x y z and you'd have an, an a y component function of x y and z and you'd have an a the Z component X, Y, and Z, and now and so you know you can picture then if you if you have to solve a complicated problem in three dimensions and you need all these terms, the the calculation will be um, wrong. Um, I think uh, Mushtaba can um, you know some of his simulations take a week because you have to have these you have to solve for these three terms if you have a big problem so so um, uh, so then the the dal the dal squared a term here that would operate on um, operate on this this vector here and you'd have dal squared on on the ax plus the ay plus the AZ. So you can see it would get, uh, it, you can spend a long time thinking about um, and formulating the problem um, to solve all three components together. And then you have add the, the um, electric scalar potential V becomes more um, complicated. So we're going to look at just how to solve one component uh, AZ in a 2D problem um, and that will give you some idea of, of how how to solve these types of problems. Uh, if, if, the, if this term here uh, del A del T if you can model it using steady state methods then um, you know so for for steady state conditions we assume that we have um, the uh, the vector A also has a time component right and so we can rewrite that as A x, y, z, e to the j, omega e t. Uh, so, so up here I didn't put the time in into each of these so that they, were, they could also be a function of time. Uh, if it's steady state then um, you can pull that time component out and uh, put an exponential here um, like you do with the electric circuits, steady state electric circuits, and then the the derivative term in in here would become uh, complex. So then you so then then this del a del t becomes j omega a, and so that so every every, every uh, electromagnetic program they'll have a steady state feature where you can say well everything's going at 60 hertz uh, so we can assume 
then that the whole problem is in steady state. We're not interested in what's happening with the transient when it turns on. We're just wanting to know how it operates in steady state. And in that case, um, then the problem would be simplified because you, you, you would only have to solve one, one set of equations where you, the, the time derivative is replaced by a complex uh, term. And uh, we'll talk about that more. So, um, so this this is, looks complicated. So let's let's reduce this down and see. Um, things can get uh, things get a lot easier if we think in terms of two D. So, and that's what we're going to pretty much do in this class. So now, if we um, and and you know you can generalize to three D. Um, but we're just going to mainly look at 2D. And life is, life is a lot easier in 2D land. So for 2D, 2D quasi-static problems. So for 2D, what is the what is ax and ay in 2D? So if 2D, if we have if we have Cartesian, we have bx and by only. And remember, we can we can find find that from the derivatives of of the a. So in 2D, we don't need um, to model the ay or the ax and so then things life gets easier uh, for 2d as ax and ay equals zero then um, As, uh, for 2D as AX AY equals zero, then with no magnets, we'll just not have magnets to start with present, no, no magnet, um, magnetization vector, I should say, M. Uh, then we, then we, we don't have the AX and AY. So this del squared A then becomes del squared AZ. So expanding that out, we'd have del squared AZ as a function of X and Y plus del squared AZ uh, with respect to the second derivative with respect to Y is equal to mu naught sigma del az del t plus mu naught sigma del v minus um, mu naught j. I, I multiply everything by mu naught. Uh, but that, that it, get, it can be simpler than that still. So let's, let's call this equation um, equation 33. 33. Okay, so let's 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 think a bit more about current. So note um, since J is equal to sigma E, right? And remember E can be written in terms of the um, magnetic vector potential. So we, we can write that E is equal to del A del T plus del V. Okay. Now for two for the two D problem for the two D problem, then we only have A Z. So therefore J can only have a Z term. So that's you know if you have a two D problem with a machine some machine here, 
then um, in 2D the current can only go into the board in the Z direction and um, and so and, and that's because A would only have a Z term going into the board so um, I'll just um, I'll just make this point and then we'll and then we'll stop. You forgot 31 and 32. Were those those two equations that you just? Oh, yes, that yes, that was uh, yeah, that was 31 and 32. Thanks. We're almost at the end of the numbering. Um, uh, I need to try to stop saying uh too. See now I really want to say uh. <coughs> you can't start now before saying it. <laughs> hmm. uh, okay, I've got to say it. I'll, I'll try to improve. Um, so let's see, where was I? So we've got this J. Um, J is, uh, can only have a Z component uh, because A will only have a Z component. So for, for 2D as AX, AY is equal to zero, JZ can only have a Z component. All right, so therefore we can rewrite that we have JZ is equal to sigma del A Z del T. So that's, you know, the current, that's what they're saying, what the, uh, let me just, plus del V. So what, what, the, what this is saying is that the, the uh, the change in the AZ with respect to time will induce a current uh, J. Now, um, so, so everything has to be in terms of Z, right? But what is this? This is del V. Del V, that, that has three components. But when you take the, the, the gradient of a scalar, you get three components out. But it, this this whole this whole term here can only have z because we're we're living in two D land. So we could we could we could take the dot product of this because everything else everything has to be only have z. So um, so if we look at so if we if we look at this we'd have we'd have del a z del T plus del V with a dot with respect to the Z direction. Okay? So let's let's look at that in a little bit more detail. So del V dot Z. So that is equal to del V del X plus del V del Y plus del V del Z component and we dot that with the Z direction. Uh, so that will then give just del V del Z. So now in 2D the V term can only exist with respect to the V changing with Z. Now try to think about what that would mean then. So in a 2D problem, you have a 2D problem, you have X and Y. How does the, the values change in the Z direction into the page? Can they, can it, so if you think about it as a snapshot of different depths, right, this is, yeah, this is a 2D problem. So you have a 2D problem. Is there any change 
if I if I evaluate the 2D problem, is there any change if I evaluate it at z equal to zero position or z equal to one meter position? Then it has to be the same. It's the same problem. There there is no there is no change in z because z z it, 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 z doesn't really exist. It's just a, a width that you would define. You know, you would for example, if you have a machine that is long. Then you can then you can do a cross section of it, and not and, and neglect and how it changes with respect to z, and assume that uh, the field is constant uh, along the z because it it it, it uh, and look, a rotary machine uh, would have some difference on the edges, but in most of the machine would not change um, how it operates along the depth of it, especially with lots of um, the, with, with all the magnetic steel everything wants to flow, the fields want to flow radially and angular, in an angular direction not in the Z so it's quite reasonable to model an electric machine in many cases in 2D there is no Z component so now if you go back to here that if we don't have a, cha a change in the Z then if you take the derivative of the scalar potential with respect to z, it's got to be zero. It did, or it could be a constant, but it's, it's not going to have any consequence. It's, it's not changing. So then we can neglect it for 2D problems, which is great. So since um, z axis variation is neglected in 2D del V equals zero for uh, 2D problems and that, that, that really helps because um, then then we get that then we get that this term goes away we can assume it's zero and so our problem reduces down to del squared az is equal to mu naught sigma da dt minus mu naught jz so here there's only one unknown Az that that we have to solve for, uh, and and then um, and we can find um, and and we can find that using um, a finite element approach, which we'll talk about uh, starting next lecture. Thank you.